Next we have our U.S. Senate candidates and representatives. First up, Gary Glenn. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you? I find that I frequently say that I was raised on Reagan and I've been hard to please ever since. I married the 1980 Youth for Reagan state chairman, my wife, Annette. You can tell if she was state chairman of Ethan Reagan 30 years ago, she was still in elementary school. <laughs> we got married on March 4th. Didn't know until after the fact that that was the same day as Ron and Nancy got married. And we got an anniversary note from them on White House stationery. And when we have the privilege of doing so, we like to bring our real secret weapon, my 17-year-old daughter, Reagan Elizabeth Glenn. <laughs> I think the issue that ought to dominate the debate for the United States Senate in Michigan in 2012 is this one statistic. You've seen politicians go on TV and take credit for how many jobs they created. So surely Debbie Stabenow will take responsibility for the fact that on her watch, in the 10 years she's been in the United States Senate, our state has lost 800,000 private sector jobs. The worst job loss in America. So what Ronald Reagan said 30 years ago is still true today. A recession is when somebody you know lost their job. A depression is when you lose your job. And a recovery is when Barack Obama and Debbie Stabenow lose their job. <laughs> I mean this in all seriousness. I was in Washington a couple of months ago, and as I was headed back to the airport, a very dark, cloud of oppressive thought descended on me, I realized if I were to win this election, I have to go there <laughs> and stay. The monuments are pretty, but it's a political snake pit. It's not like living in Larkin Township outside of a small community down in the Lower Peninsula. Most disruptive thing for my family would be to actually win. I've got young kids still at home. So why would I risk winning? and spending all the time and effort and money it'll take to get there. Well, I'll tell you a story. I was raised by a World War II Marine. This Marine survived the attack on Pearl Harbor. I'd always wanted to do this. If you've seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, it begins and it ends in the graveyard at Normandy, the old Private Ryan with his family. I'm so grateful to the Lord that the year I got in my spirit the impression do it this year that I did. So the last December, my dad was alive, and that and I took my mom and him back to Hawaii. I stood in the same street in the same spot he remembered standing, shooting at Japanese airplanes. Later, we were on the USS Arizona Memorial. I carry a picture I took of him in my wallet with the commander of all Marine forces in the Pacific, and my dad was wearing a purple lei, which identified him as a survivor and what that meant was that general and the admirals and the captains and the lieutenants saluted my father, former staff sergeant, James R. Glenn. We found his best friend's grave later that day, and that young man's gravestone had his birthday and his death day on his stone. He was exactly 17 and a half years old when he died on the USS Oklahoma. I tell you that because when I search my heart for the reason, why are you running for the United States Senate? It's because my father, not just by his words, but by the example of his life, taught me to love my country. And I believe that everything he taught me to love about my country, that your parents and grandparents no doubt taught you. Our liberty, our free enterprise economy, our strength and security, our free enterprise economy, and our, our founding Judeo-Christian principles are at imminent risk of being lost in a way that I would never as an American have conceived possible. I believe that if Barack Obama and Debbie Stabenow are re-elected, given another term, given the opportunity to finish the job of implementing their agenda, they threaten to take away my children's birthright of freedom and turn our country into the United Socialist States of America. 
And we and our children might not ever get a free country back. So I assume I'm standing here for the same reason you're sitting there. You feel a sense of duty. I don't wear either uniform anymore, but I'm an Eagle Scout, as are three of my sons and one on the way. I swore an oath to do my best, to do my duty to God and my country. And 20 years later, I took another oath, and I know some of you in here took the same oath, to uphold and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I believe the threats to our liberty today come more from sources that are domestic Amen. than from any power outside the borders of this country. Now, I match that sense of duty with a life's experience that has taught me, if I do what my dad said I ought to do, stand up and fight for what I believe in, I can make a difference. I ran the campaign in the 1980s that successfully passed a right-to-work law in the state of Idaho. If I'm a U.S. Senator, I'll support that policy in Washington, D.C. as well. As a county commissioner, 16 years ago, I authored the first medical savings account health care plan for county employees anywhere in America. Was invited to testify before Congress and called a national pioneer in free market health care reform. And for the last 12 years, I've been president of the American Family Association of Michigan, promoting traditional Judeo-Christian values, and was one of two co-authors of the Marriage Protection Amendment that was on our ballot back in 2004. They got 60% of the vote for the notion that marriage should remain only between a man and a woman, and got majorities of the vote in the city limits of Detroit and Flint and Saginaw. So whether it was labor law reform or protecting traditional family values or health care reform, I've got a record of experience that when I match it with that sense of duty, I feel compelled. I had volunteered to serve my country before. I volunteer to serve it now. If we will simply restore the founding constitutional Tea Party Republican conservative principles on which our country was founded and which made us the greatest economic power and force for moral good on the face of the planet, if we'll simply restore those principles, we can turn the light of liberty back on in this shining city on a hill and make Michigan and America as great again as we have ever been. I'm committed to that mission, that mission and I ask your support in my candidacy for the United States Senate. God bless you. Amen.